I just bought this Hitachi air nailer after doing quite a bit of research. Basically, in the end, it came down to I just did not want to spend 400 bucks on a cordless nailer. They are neat. They're neat in concept, and they're gaining popularity every day. But there's still a lot of problems from what I've read. Not many have five-star reviews. So I've got an air compressor. Who doesn't? And all you have to do is have long enough hose and crack a window or door and lay your baseboard out, your framework, whatever you're going to nail. Jam in some quick nails with your air nailer and put it down, disconnect it, throw your hose back outside and close the door or window if it's cold or really hot outside. After reading reviews, I decided to go with this Hitachi air nailer. I had a contractor who did several jobs around the house, a couple bathrooms and a ramp and a new door. And he went through, I don't know how many nails, could have been a thousand or two. And it, the gun never faltered. And it's like, it's exactly like this. It's identical. A Hitachi NT65M2. Owner's manual has an S on it. I don't know what that goes for. Some guys online said it stands for silver. The gun doesn't look silver to me. It looks like a light green, some kind of a light industrial green to me. I was going to register it, but after reading through the owner's manual, there's some testing they want you to do before you fire the first nail. And I thought that was interesting. Basically, there's a checklist. Testing the nailer. It's not just hooking it up and see if it bangs a nail. It's, there's a, there's check off boxes here. Several of them. I think that's it on those two pages. Cause here they want you to start loading the nails and seeing if the nails work or seeing if it shoots the nails. So we're going to do these we're going to do this checklist. The first thing they want you to do is check all the cap screws on it. And it's a number four. You know, I'd be shocked if any of these screws are actually loose. I'm not even going to torque them down. Normally I wouldn't even go through this step. You know, you buy a new tool, you just assume that everything's nice and tight. But it's no big deal. There's not that many of them. You, know, you got one, two, three on this end. That keeps the bottom from blowing out. And you got four on this cap. And this just rotates to direct the air discharge. So we're just going to see if basically... Four screws are tight enough to begin, and naturally they are. I wouldn't expect any less. After all, it's Hitachi. I think Hitachi is a high quality item. Step number one's done. Disconnect air hose from nailer. It was never connected. Brand new. Remove all nails from nailer. Was never loaded. Brand new. All screws must be tightened. If any screws are loose, tighten them. We'll check that. Next is the push lever and trigger must move smoothly. Well, I haven't checked it yet. Well, the trigger is basically dead. There's no resistance on it. Probably won't be any until it's loaded. And the push lever is, is this guy. They definitely move freely. So we'll check that one off. Okay, following the instructions, on this particular air nailer. We're going to adjust the air pressure to 70 PSI. Keep in mind, on the previous step, where we checked the push lever and the trigger must move smoothly, there was no air hooked up. And we had the dead trigger. And you, that will activate the gun. Gauge on the right, I think we're there. Okay, going right down the list, we're going to connect the air hose next. I want to say right now that this video, this has nothing to do with Hitachi. I guess this would be my disclaimer. Uh, this is just my personal experience after buying their tool. And I'm just showing you how I follow this instruction manual, mainly because this is my first nailer of any kind, automatic, battery, whatever, this is it. 
I've drove a lot of baseboard myself. We do minor remodeling ourselves, and using a hammer and a nail and a punch to deep set it has just become a real. And after watching my contractor work, I was sold on this just this exact gun. The next step is they want you to make sure this button. This is a switching device in the upward position. And there's the picture. Oh, I hope it's in focus. It shows it up opposite where the trigger is going down. I'm going to move it down just to see if it moves. It did move. Now we're going to go, we're going to go back up. Boom. It's in the up position. Set the switching device to the upward position. That is single sequential actuation mechanism. Set the switching device to the upward position completely as shown in the diagram. Otherwise it will not operate properly. Then it shows a picture upward position. We're going to check this guy off. The nailer must not leak air. Okay. We've got no air leaks. I think I would hear him if it would. Remove the finger from the trigger and press the push lever against the wood. The nailer must not operate. I want you to pick it up, remove the finger, and press the push lever against the wood. Finger off the trigger. The nailer must not operate. Well, if it does, we'll hear a bang. I think you can see this. No operation. Check him off. In the same step, we're going to separate the push lever from the wood. Okay, we took it off. Next, point the nailer downward. Pull the trigger and then wait in that position for five seconds or longer. The nailer must not operate. Now let's see here. Trigger's pulled. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't think we're going to get a fire out of that. So. I think we passed this. I just want to mention these things are dangerous. Huh? I've never drove a nail with anything, only with a hammer. I've never in my life used this. But my contractor, he had an accident with a 16 gauge and something happened on the work site and he drove it through two fingers together and it was bleeding quite a bit. And then they took him to the hospital. Uh, he saved his fingers but they're kind of scary. You know, if you're using them around family, your, even your wife and your kids are in the same room, I don't know about that. It's, I don't have to worry about kids being around me when I'm doing it. And my wife, she'll steer clear of me too. And she knows they're dangerous. I think a lot of people have been injured with them. So if you're thinking about getting one, do your research and watch all the videos you can. And above all, just be careful read everything about three times about it. Before I proceed with the next step, this does take air. So I'm going to uh, quickly put in 10 drops. This is genuine Hitachi oil. Owner's manual tells you in this to do between five and 10 drops every day. So uh, we're in focus. I don't know how big a mess I'll make, I'm going to try it here. Oh my, just damn it, poured out. Uh, we'll call that five. Okay, we definitely got to clean that up. Well, went ahead and cleaned up the oil. I don't think you, I think you want to be careful not to over oil it. Because I just envision oil blown out all over your baseboard or your window frames or whatever you're going to do with it. So several years ago, I thought about a, a narrow nailer before the cordless stuff was kicking in. And I didn't want to mess with this. It had a the regulator and it had a lubricator and a filter. And I thought, well, for no more than I'm doing, I just don't think that's going to be worth it. So Hitachi wants you to use a filter, regulator, lubricator. Three words right here. 
filter regular lubricator it's in line it's in your air line before it gets to the gun but then after reading watching some youtube videos if you don't go that route Hitachi states simply right here if a lubricator is not available supply five to ten drops of Hitachi pneumatic tool lubricant into the air plug on the nailer twice a day that is considered the air plug where the unit goes I further researched that statement air plug because it's got this push button here to blow air, blow sawdust away when you're working, stuff like that. So that's where the oil goes. This next test, the gun's going to fire. This test here, there's still no nails in the gun. On this one here, without touching the trigger, depress and push the lever against the workpiece. Pull the trigger, then it's got in caps, the nailer must operate. So we're going to do it on this one, so you can see it. Without touching the trigger, we're down. Depress the push lever against the workpiece, pull the trigger. The nailer must operate, or it should operate. Here we go. Did not operate. Well, I lost my air pressure. My 70 pounds on that side of the regulator was down to zero. The air compressor is not keeping that other side at a constant 70, so that's a separate issue. So we're going to do it again. I've got 70 pounds now, the recommended, and we'll try it again. I'm not going to edit that out because this is what's happening to me on my, on my series of testing. No air. It can't operate. Okay, we're expecting it to operate. I put air plugs in. Without touching the trigger, depress the push lever against the workpiece, pull the trigger, the nailer must operate. We're down, I'm going to pull the trigger. We'll call that an operation. You see, even left a little indentation here. I wasn't expecting that. I guess that's the hammer or remove the finger from the trigger. The nailer did operate. We'll check that. Remove the trigger from the remove the finger from the trigger. Nailer operation will end. The driver blade will return to the top. That was that second stage sound that it made. Um, I'll know more about it when I see it in use. Now we're going to flip this switch. I'm not fully up on what all this means. That's one nail at a time. It's kind of cool. It's like an AR-15 or some of the H&K models. They had a single bullet for semi-automatic and they had a series of three bullets for full auto or burst on the MP5s and the H&K uh, 416s that the military uses. I like that. But what's that got to do with the nailer? I, okay. We're going to set the switching device to the downward position. Take the mirror plugs out. It's called contact actuation mechanism. I think that's when you pull the trigger. It's in the down position. There and then there. And I've got to get out of the habit of sweeping my body with the nail or just like I would a rifle or a pistol, I think. so. Set the switching device to the downward position completely shown in the diagram, otherwise it will not operate properly. Okay, we are down. With the nailer off the workpiece, pull the trigger, deep press the push lever against the workpiece. The nailer must operate. Okay, gotta read it again. With the nailer off the workpiece, pull the trigger. The trigger's pulled. Deep press the push lever against the workpiece and the nailer must operate. If no abnormal operation is observed, you may load nails in the nailer. Drive nails into the workpiece that is the same type to be used in actual application. The nailer must operate properly. I think we're going to be okay. Triggers pulled. It's not loud at all, and I'm inside a fairly small workshop. We've done that. We're good to go. 
do not exceed 120 PSI. I guess the guy's got some delicate parts in it. So I think operating pressure is to be maintained about 90. I won't exceed 90. I think you can adjust the air pressure to drive the depth of your nails. I'm using two inch nails on baseboard to start with. Now my air compressor is staying at 70 like it's supposed to. Also, I made a decision. I've read several online uh, posts and threads on some of the construction contractor forums. A lot of problems develop when people are trying to use another type, another brand of nail and another brand of gun. You know, if I was to buy a pass load, and I, by the way, this is a 16 gauge, I should have mentioned that. The pass load 16 gauge, I think it's 400 bucks also. It uses a battery and a fuel cartridge. They're extremely lightweight, but this gun's lightweight too. The only thing you do, you just eliminate the air hose. So, and that's no big deal for no more than I'm gonna do with it. I'm only going to use Hitachi nails, so I'm going to completely eliminate the problem of using any other brand of nail. I'm just not going to do it. Hitachi made these nails or had them made to their specs, and that's, that's all I'm going to use. I've got two and a half and I've got two inch. We'll load some up and try it. I want to add here that it does have an adjuster on it for, and I don't know because I haven't got that far, but I think it's got an adjuster for the depth of nails. Oh, I might be wrong on that. But it says right here, adjust the air pressure at recommended operating pressure, 70 to 120 PSI, pounds per square inch, then it gives the bars, according to the length of nails and the hardness of the workpiece. The correct air pressure is the lowest pressure which will do the job. Using the nailer at a higher than required air pressure unnecessarily overstresses the nailer. So what I'll do is basically take a 2 before like this, lay my baseboard or framing on it, take a 2 inch or 2 and a half nail, whatever I'm doing, and then do some practicing outside. And then you should be, should be close enough to, to start your job. I thought that was interesting. Whether it's got an adjuster on it or not, I'll get back to that. Before I load nails, I went ahead and unplugged it. So when I did, it blew quite a bit of oil. Well, not a whole lot, but you can see the oil splatter here. It come back on my hand, so I'd say half that oil didn't make it up into the guts, but maybe it doesn't have to. It does have an adjuster. Uh, I'm not going to get to that part yet, but here it is. You will spin this guy right here. There's a click. Uh, it's pretty neat. You're not just free will, and it does have clicks or indentations that you can feel and count. So... And Hitachi, uh, just not that it makes any difference. It, it is made in Taiwan. I think Taiwan's putting out some good stuff. Another thing I got to mention before I forget it. I apologize, I'm getting off, I'm not getting off the tangent on the nail. The case. Look at the case. How many tools come with a case? DeWalt's used to. The new generation DeWalt's, they come in a, they come in a little soft uh, satchel, or they come in a soft bag, which is pretty nice, but this is not only a case, it's a form-fitted case. Safety glasses came with it. I hear, I hear complaints online, that why didn't Hitachi make room to store nails? Well, I mean, if they did make room to store nails, people would probably bitch that it can't hold enough nails. You know, say it held a thousand. People would bitch because it doesn't hold five thousand. Now it weighs 80 pounds carrying it to the work site. So it's just a, it's just a nice, it's a very nice case. And, and it locks. And you just gotta like that. If you don't like it, there's something wrong with it. We're going to load the nails. Loading nails warning. When loading nails into nailer, do not pull trigger. Do not depress push lever. That's this guy. Keep the nailer pointed downward. No, we're not hooked up to our air, to our air hose. Put the nail feeder until the concave portion of the magazine cover clicks. Uh, I don't know why that's... I guess they're calling that the concave part. I don't know. 
Well, it's like a bullet going out of the barrel. You wanted to point it into the bullet going out of the barrel. There you go. Point it in the nail going out that way. Same concept. Insert nail strips one by one from above the magazine. Slide nails forward in the magazine. By forward, I think they mean, no, I think they mean, yeah, forward that way. While holding the nail feeder, adjust the magazine cover in place. I don't know what the magazine cover would be. Slide the nail feeder slowly forward until it contacts nails. It's got pressure on it, just like a follower in a AR-15 mag. Use nails, at least five nails remaining. I don't think they want you loading two, three, maybe even four nails. Use nails, at least five nails remaining. Okay, slide the nail feeder slowly forward. If the nail feeder, this guy, is released roughly, it may, it may be stuck between the magazine and the nails, which makes misfeeding, which makes misfeeding trouble. I'm going to do another shot of that at the nail feeder. It locks in down here. My hands block everything, so I'll be doing it again. But, you know, if you... You're going to be able to figure it out. I mean, it locks down there. You will push this. So you will pull back, pull down, push this, and that releases it. And it comes up. And like I say, don't worry so much about that not hitting the nails. It has an extended follower that comes up that distance. It probably runs. Probably runs almost for the full length of the nail. Because I'm loading two inch and I can load up to two and a half. Got the PSI set on 90. I might back that down to 80. No, it's good from 70 to 120, so I don't know if there's any break in involved or not, so 90 should be pretty decent. The first nail we drive with the tool is going to be single sequential actuation mechanism. It's this guy here. Okay, let me make sure I can see it. It's this guy here. He said on single fire. To me, this is, you know, it's like a single action. It's like semi-automatic, so, right here. Single shot. Uh, explanation of the various nailing operations. In this setting, si single sequential actuation mechanism. First, press the push lever against the wood. Next, pull the trigger to drive the nail. So you'll depress, drive the nail. You hear that little, like a double, clutch it there. That's the hammer resetting. That nail is absolutely flush. That's, I mean, that's perfect for that right there. So I won't mess with the, if I was going to mess with the settings, it'd be this thumb screw here, but we're not going to, I'm not going to experiment with it. I'm just going to try a few different shots. So I'm pulling the trigger. I got nothing. Now if I pull the trigger and then depress it, nothing. Now if I was to move this forward, that would be far and I would have just fired three or four nails right there. So this should only work when you depress it and fire the nail. Again, it's perfect. It's flush or slightly below. So I'm pulling the pulling the trigger. Nothing. This will only work if you depress, then pull it. I saw a spark come out of that one. And I'm not wearing earplugs, and I'm inside a ooh, like a 15 by 20 workshop, and this is not going to be disruptive in the house with occupants at all. So now we're going to adjust it to semi-automatic, let's just read the instructions. It's called contact actuation mechanism. First, press the push lever against the workpiece. Next, pull the trigger to drive a nail. Or pull the trigger, then press the push lever against the workpiece to drive the nail. So it's either or. I can pull the trigger, or I can go this and trigger. 
But where this feature shines, what I call semi-automatic, would be this act right here. Pull the trigger and keep the trigger pulled. That's cool. Well, I think this is going to conclude it. Thanks for staying with me on this. If you have any questions, put them in the comments and I'll answer them if you want me to do anything else with the air nailer. If you think about buying one, put a link in the description on it. But it's doing a it's doing an incredible job right here. Very consistent on on the depth. It's just slightly below the surface. And that's just two tuba fours. One's this one is treated. And that's that's only a two-inch nail. Okay, thanks for watching.